Hey everyone, I'm Kyle here to give a brief introduction to GitHub Actions with Dagger. So we'll start with a little overview of GitHub Actions itself, if you haven't used it before, and then how you can run Dagger in GitHub Actions. So first, the, the GitHub Actions basics. It runs workflows based on events in your repository. So for example, if we have the repository Dagger, and we have a bunch of pull requests, and a new commit is pushed to a pull request, we want a bunch of things to happen when we push that commit to make sure that the commit's valid. So that's basically CI, right? Continuous integration. We're going to be running tests and lints and all this validation to make sure that the new commit is good. So if we go to the actions tab in this repo, we see a bunch of stuff happening and we have a bunch of different workflows and I can filter down to a specific workflow, go into a specific event of that workflow, and then in this workflow, I see a whole bunch of different jobs and I can open up a job and see all of its steps. So we'll go back and figure out how we actually build something that looks like this uh, using Dagger. Uh, so GitHub Actions are configured with YAML. So that's a configuration language and we'll look at what that configuration looks like in a second. And then GitHub offers a free tier. So if you have a GitHub repo, you can go use Actions right now without needing to pay for anything. Uh, if you have a really advanced usage, then there are options to uh, set things up yourself or pay someone else to have more advanced GitHub runners to do more advanced types of workflows. So the GitHub Actions YAML, this is a configuration for GitHub Actions. Uh, GitHub Actions configuration goes in, in your repository .github slash workflows and in that directory you can have as many yaml files as you want you can call them whenever you want uh, this one is ci.yaml and we've said its name is ci and this part here is the whole yaml configuration uh, so first of all we have this block called on and this determines when the workflow should run so the workflow is kind of a combination of a trigger so something happens in your repository and then a bunch of steps that should happen when that event happens. So in this case, we've said when a push happens to branches that are anything except for main. And when that happens, we want these jobs to run. And we have a job called CI. In this example, there's only one job and its name is CI. And we say it runs on Ubuntu latest. So this determines what machine the all these steps should happen in. Uh, so GitHub, GitHub Actions offers a bunch of different types of machines like uh, Linux VMs, which is this Ubuntu latest one. You can run Mac OS VMs, Windows VMs. Uh, there's different architecture options as well, like AMD 64 or ARM 64. Um, if you have your own runners, this is where you would specify my cool runner uh, or you know, whatever self-hosted thing you might be running or some other service that's running runners for you. And then we have our steps. So these are the sequential operations of events that should happen in this workflow. Uh, so we have different types of steps happening here. So let's talk about the different types of steps. There are actions and commands, basically. Uh, so these first two, we see uh, this uses thing. So that's using another GitHub action from somewhere on GitHub. Uh, so in this case, this first one, it, the actual GitHub repo is action slash checkout and its version is V4. So if we go look at this, this is just a GitHub repo, like I said, action slash checkout. And it's a special type of repo that basically says, I can be used as a step inside of a GitHub Actions workflow. And here are all the parameters that I could take. Um, some of them are optional, some of them are not optional. And here's a bunch of examples of how to use this as a GitHub Action. This specific one, Actions Checkout, is one that you probably see in most GitHub Actions workflows because what it's gonna be doing is on this event that triggered this workflow, which was some commit was pushed to a branch, Usually I want to take the version of my app at that commit to do a bunch of things on it, right? Because if I want to run tests in CI, I want to run tests on that version that was just changed so that I know if that version is something that I can merge into my code base. So 
if I use actions checkout, now I have the specific version of my code that was pushed to a branch somewhere. Uh, and then we have this other step here that's action setup go. So uh, a setup action is another type of action that you'll see used pretty frequently where it's really just installing a tool into your environment. So setup go is going to install go and actions can also take parameters like we mentioned before with checkout where we didn't pass any parameters here. We're just using the default setup, but we can pass in parameters with this with block and we can say the go version should be at least 1.17. And so we've now installed go into this environment and it should be at least this version. And then we have this other step here where we're just running something. So these ones are actions. These steps are actions. These steps are just running a shell command. And so I've called this step test and I'm going to say we're running go test. In this specific step, I've also set some environment variables that will be applied to running this command. So I've set cgo enabled one. And so setting this line is the same as in my shell saying export cgo enabled equals one. I'm setting this variable for that shell. I can also use secrets within GitHub. So if you go configure in your GitHub repository to have action secrets to say my var foo equals bar, you set that in GitHub, but now you can use this in your workflow. So if you have secret variables like tokens to some third party service uh, or whatever your secret might be, you can reference those in your workflow file and they're gonna be scrubbed from the logs and all these things so they don't get leaked anywhere. Um, but you can have this in your environment. So I set my var foo equals this secret and I can reference it with these double curly braces. Now we mentioned with that first example workflow that we wanted it to run when we push a commit to a branch. There's lots of different types of workflows, types of workflow triggers. Uh, so we can run a workflow when a commit is pushed. So this is the one we just looked at where we say when we push, uh, when you push to a branch, run the workflow. But we can also say run a workflow when a pull request is opened. So we say on pull request, and then an event has an action type. And so that could be opened, reopened. There's lots of other ones, like maybe you close a pull request and you want to run a specific event when a pull request is closed and so on. Uh, another common one is maybe comments. So you want to flag uh, issue comments. Uh, issue refers to both ish proper issues and pull requests. So if you want to do something when an uh, uh, issue is created, so I've commented, or sorry, issue comments is created, I've commented on issue, and now I can run a workflow when that happens. Uh, you can also run workflows on a schedule. So here I've set a cron to say run this workflow on a schedule. Uh, and if we go to this documentation page over here, uh, events that trigger workflows. This is one that I reference a lot. And on the right side here, we have all the different types of events that can trigger workflows and then information about how to use these events, what the activity types are, and for a lot of cases, examples of what that block would look like. So we know how workflows get triggered. We talked a little bit before about the types of steps. So an action can be with uses and it's going to reference some GitHub repo somewhere that is a GitHub action. So it's a thing that can act as a step. And those actions can take parameters. A step can also be a shell command. So we can give it a name. We can just run a shell command. So dagger functions. We're stepping back a bit to talk about the dagger side of what we actually want to run in GitHub. So let's say I have my GitHub repo uh, greetings API, and this is one that I demo from a lot. So if I run dagger functions on that repo, we'll run that. Uh, and we're going to see all the different functions available in this repository. And so the one that I would run for CI, so the thing that I want to run whenever a commit happens, for example, is this check function. Uh, so the check, uh, I know because I wrote it, it happens to run lint, test, and build. If you want to learn how to write these kinds of functions for your application, you can check out the quick start and it's over here on the dagger documentation uh, so it's build a ci pipeline and it'll take you through how to write all of those types of functions in your repository but let's say we've already done that we have this 
check function that we want to run in GitHub Actions whenever someone pushes a commit. There's kind of a few different ways we can do that, but we're going to use the dagger for GitHub action. And so if I go just real quick over here, it's a repo dagger slash dagger for GitHub. And this is a GitHub action. It's got this action.yaml. It's a thing that is a GitHub action that we can use as a step in a GitHub actions workflow. And there's a few different ways to use it. This markdown page should document all the different parameters and whether they're required and um, and how to use the GitHub action. But we're going to talk about two different ways to use it. So again, we have that .github slash workflows ci.yaml. This is, again, can be named anything. We have a workflow that runs whenever I push a commit. And this job runs on Ubuntu latest, so just the free GitHub Actions Linux runner. It runs that checkout. So now I have my code in this uh, runtime. And now we have this uses dagger slash dagger for GitHub at 8.0.0. At the time of recording this, this is the latest version. Uh, and so with this, I now have that repo we just looked at as a step. And this thing will accept some parameters and we're gonna say call check. Because remember that was the function that we wanted to run in this CI workflow. And I can also pass in my cloud token. So I've set that as a secret in my uh, GitHub repo. And so I can reference that in this workflow and it will pass that in to be in the environment when we call check. So this is one way to use the dagger for GitHub action is I can say uses dagger for GitHub and then pass some parameters to it, like what function I want to call and my cloud token. And there was a few other documented on that, on that um, markdown page. There's another way to use this, however, where I can just use it as kind of a setup type of action. Uh, so remember before when we looked at setup go and it really just installs the tools in your runtime and then you're going to use run steps to actually run whatever you want to run. So the, the first part of this is all the same. I'm running on the Ubuntu latest runner. I've run checkout. And then now here the difference is I'm saying uses dagger for GitHub. I have not passed any parameters to it. And so really all this is going to do is install the dagger CLI and make sure that dagger engine is ready to go. And then now I have another step here that's just a run step. It's just running a shell. And I'm going to say dagger call check. So this is the exact same command that I would run locally. And I'm going to run this in my workflow and then pass in the environment dagger cloud token so that I can see that run in dagger cloud. One reason you might want to do this is if you have several functions that you want to run in your workflow. Like if I don't have a check, I want to run dagger call lint, dagger call test, dagger call build. Then I can actually list those out as separate steps in this job. And using this as a set of action, I, all I really wanted to do first is install the dagger CLI so that I can run these the way that I want to run them. Uh, so there's flexibility in how you use the dagger for GitHub action, whether you want to run uh, just all one block that's a little bit cleaner if you're just running a single function, or if you want to run it as a setup action so that you can use individual shell steps to run your dagger functions. Next steps, now you're running Dagger in GitHub Actions uh, and you want to have some more advanced usage. You can also look at uh, this page over here to run self-hosted GitHub Actions runners in Kubernetes. So very advanced uh, and this will be a whole separate video for sure. Uh, but we provide configurations so that you can actually uh, control Dagger within that Kubernetes system. Uh, another option is you can run your GitHub Actions runners with Depot, and that will give you a bunch of performance benefits as well as some great caching benefits, and they integrate natively with Dagger with those runners. So those are two really great options, uh, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about how to use this Dagger for GitHub Action, please come to our Discord, and I will personally help you out. Thanks.